Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. All of these adorable projects on the table uh, and of course displayed behind me are part of Nancy Halverson's Better Not Pout book. Now, many of you are already in our Better Not Pout Ornament Club. So much fun. Hey, we would love to have you in there. There are 12 ornaments. So much fun. We have 11 behind me. One we've already given away. We did a fun giveaway with that. But if you are part of that club, that means you already got this book. So I'm going to be showing you four projects today. I'll be going over one specifically. We'll be, we'll be doing the Santa towel together. Let me show it to you. It's adorable. It's a good sized towel that would be just adorable displayed, of course, in the kitchen. And what an amazing gift to give. We have some other towels and other styles as well with the truck, the angel. Let's see, what all do we have? There's just so much going on on this set. It's beautiful and the beautiful joy with the bird and the, the holly. And we have some fun coordinating pot holders. And you can notice that a lot of those have button embellishments. So you can see for the pot holders, they're really for decorative pur uh, purposes more than a, a practical use you wouldn't want to put a hot pan on that or anything. But you know, that's what makes Christmas so special as these types of handmade products. So again, if you're already in the ornament club, the great news is, is when you get these kits, you don't need to buy that book. And if you're in the ornament club and already have the thread set, it's the same exact thread set. So we did that on purpose so that all of these coordinate beautifully and you only need to get the book once and the thread set once and you can do any of the projects that you see here. Okay, so let's talk about these towels. We know that you love prefuse laser cut applique and so do we. So we've already done all of that for you and you will be getting a finished towel, which I love. Now in the uh, pot holders, you'll getting, be getting toweling that is not a finished towel because you don't need that size. So that's more like toweling by the yard. And we'll be putting enough in your kit for the front and the back. And of course, again, prefuse laser cut applique, uh, of course, buttons, and then the fabric to be able to do your binding and your hanger. Much simpler to follow those instructions inside the book. That's why I'm going to go ahead and take the time today to go over the towel so I can show you just how um, easy it is to actually put these together. So let's put that off to the side for now. Lots of tools, of course, we need to be putting these projects together. And I'll just be talking to those as I'm using them. So let's get out our light box and our uh, applique pressing sheet. And what we've created for you is a layout diagram. Let me talk to you about how important layout diagrams are. Inside the Better Not Pout book, all of the things that are included in here are reverse refusable applique, which is fantastic whenever you want to trace your shapes. Well, for you, buying our prefuse laser cut kits, you don't need to worry about tracing and cutting out because we've done that for you. What you want to do is be able to use a layout diagram, um, which is not provided in the book, but we've gone ahead and done that for you so that you can use that in combination with a light box and an applique pressing mat or sheet to be able to pre-assemble that unit and move it onto your towel as one piece. So when you get your kits, all of these will have layout diagrams provided to you at no extra cost. Some of them are two sheets, line them up, tape them together. This is the wafer two light box. It's going to work beautifully for any of the projects that you see here. And it's a great size really for most other projects that you may be doing that are involving applique. There's a wafer three that's even bigger, not needed for these projects, but if you like to work on bigger projects, that may be one that you wanna consider. So I've got my lighting turned a little bit uh, dimmer than I would like to have, but we need to have a little bit dimmer for the overhead camera. All right, so let's focus on what we have here. And as you can imagine, when you get your kits, let me just bring one out so you can see that, so you know what you'll be receiving. You'll be getting your towel, you'll have your trim piece, which is included here, and you can imagine if you got all of these pieces without this layout diagram, trying to figure out the arrangement to put them onto the towel would be quite difficult. On our layout diagram, the pieces that are numbered one 
all the way up to the highest number. One is the piece that will go down first. Dashed lines indicate anything that lies behind. So that you can see number one will be going down first, followed by two. The face is three, cheeks four and five, our mustache, and you just are going to follow that sequence. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I will be waiting to do these pieces. I won't be doing the words right just yet, or this cuff, or the mitten here on this side, and that's included in the instructions inside the pattern. We have to wait until we attach the trim piece to be doing those extra ones. So let's go ahead and get started. Now when you get your kits, everything is perfectly cut for you and it's going to have the heat and bond on the back. Simply roll that edge back, any side, doesn't matter where, and you just peel that away. And you see that shine? That's a perfectly transferred amount of glue onto the background so that when we go ahead and lay everything out, it's going to it, um, just bond together beautifully. I'm gonna get my iron warming up to a medium setting don't turn that on high. Uh, heat and bond definitely prefers a more medium heat. So let's get our applique pressing sheet out, which we wanna put on top. So the sequence will be light box, layout diagram. This is the larger of the two. Uh, let me turn that over so you can see the brand here. This is the Applifuse mat. I've used a lot of applique pressing sheets and mats over the years, this one, amazing you're going to see it here performing you two are going to be like wow worth its weight in gold and you are correct <laughs> so let's go ahead when we start putting our pieces down there's this tackiness about these mats and this is one of the coolest things about these mats let's say that kind of tackiness and i'm just going to push this down and you can see that when I move it around, it doesn't go anywhere, but it's, I can lift it up if something isn't quite right. I just love the tackiness of it. Here's the other cool thing about the Applifuse mat. Let's say it kind of loses its tackiness. You've been using it a lot, maybe you left it out and kind of got dusty. No worry, just put it right in your dishwasher. Yes, your dishwasher. Wash it through its normal cycle. It'll have that nice tackiness again that you enjoy having everything hold its kind of position. So it's an amazing fe feature. All right, piece one went down. And if you have to ever look, now I know that's piece number two. I'll go ahead and place that down. And again, I can kind of just push that down and it's not gonna go anywhere. Now my piece three, if I need to look and take a quick peek, because I, have again, have it turned down, so it's a little bit more difficult for me to see right now. There's that piece, and I believe I have my cheeks coming up, and I'll have to just keep peeking to see where everything goes. I'm gonna scoot that up just a little bit higher. Let me take a peek at that one over here. And I can just see the outline of the mustache. But if I wanna check that, see that little line up there? You just need a couple of places that are your visual lineup points. You can of course be also looking at the finished image here. That's a great, and those are included in your kit. So you can be like, okay, I can see that the mustache is kind of canted just a little bit. Now my next piece going down will be piece seven. And I'll just keep building this and then we're going to fuse everything together all at once. Okay, I feel like I've got that lined up exactly where I want it. So, can't iron on that uh, light box. So I'm just going to lift this up, transfer this. I'm gonna go ahead, so I'm very limited on space, of course, on my set. I'm gonna move this out of the way. I want you to see, I'm just gonna turn this off for just a second of bring this over so it's a little more centered. I just have it kind of at an angle. 
I don't want to bump anything. Put that out of the way here. And now I'll just press straight down and everything's going to be bonded together so that once it cools, I get to take this off of my mat as one unit. Now, as I'm ironing this down, in my early generation, or my early experience, I should say, as an appliqueer, before this amazing technology of these applique fusing mats, I would bring pieces one by one to the background, guessing where they went. And especially when you have a face, you need it to be just so. So if you love applique, oh, this is, this is, this is the combination that you need to have really amazing applique results and it's fun. You, you don't have that stress of like, did I get it in the right space? So I can't, I can't endorse these enough. If, if you have to get certain products are optionals and certain products are like have tos, these are in that category of if you do a lot of applique to go ahead and get these pressing mats, the light box, they're just fabulous. And if you love to do wool, some of my experience with other types of applique sheets has been mixed working with wool. As I iron it down using an applique pressing sheet, it wouldn't always release. With this mat, it does, and it's a clean transfer every single time. So you saw me uh, just now do that, and look at, it, look at this just melt away as one piece now. Sometimes when you have a little bit of very little contact, like the pom-pom of the hat, just be extra careful. But look at this is now one unit. All of the glue, I want you, the overhead to see that, is still on here with absolutely no residue whatsoever on that mat. Now I'm going to put that aside for now. We know we have a little bit more to go, and that will be a little bit later as we put that on the bottom trim and we put that extra uh, cuff and mitten on. So once that's done, that's when we begin to put that onto our towel. Now per our instructions inside our book, it's having us go ahead and trim that hem bottom off of our towel. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Again, I'm very limited on space. Hopefully I don't knock this thread set over. <laughs> Let's put that over there. So I'm going to trim off just enough. Now you've got, let's go ahead and look at the back of the towel. You have this beautiful hanger here. Let's make sure that we're trimming off the bottom that's on the opposite end of that. So that if you do decide to hang your towel, you're able to do that. So I'm just going to square up as best I can. By all means, hey, if you want to wash your towel before you even get going, by all means do that. I did not pre-wash this. All I did was go ahead and steam it. But if you're inclined to wash that, by all means, go ahead. And I'm just going to try to get that nice and parallel. And just smooth that out. And let's go ahead and trim that up. Scoot up just a bit. It's a, it's a very long towel, so I think that no matter what, I'm going to have plenty of towel. And I'm not, very, I'm not very parallel to my bottom. I'm going to fix that. I don't like that. So let's look at that real quick. Let me show you what just happened. I think probably through my, see how this is not parallel? I, that drive me crazy. So here's what we're going to do. This is that reality quilting that I never expect to happen, but here we are. So let's talk about it. If you seem like, like I was lined up here, but now that's, it didn't cut straight, right? I lined up here, but woven towels can have a certain amount of stretch to them. So let's go ahead and take advantage of that. We'll steam that. We can repress that. And you can get what you need by just repressing things. What's most important to me is that visually I'm running parallel to this 
big long plaid, right? So let's, we have to decide what we want to line up with. And for me, that's the most important thing. So if I measure a distance away from this line, let's say we want to measure, oh gosh, what can we measure here? That would be make sense and kind of line up with what we have. Probably about right in here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tweak that even a little bit more. See how that line just wanders just a touch? That can happen, again, through pressing. Because we this is very stretchy, right? It can, it can move depending on how we iron it out. So don't be afraid to, you know, as we say, be, be the boss of your fabric. Get what you want out of that. I think that's a better line up there. There we go. Just a touch right there on the end. Yep, okay. Hey, that's why we're here. That's what my job is. It's like, uh, what do we do now? That's how we just handle that. So we have that ready to go. So now our next step is that we will be centering, and I might as well bring my pressing mat right here because we know that the next step, according to our book, is to go ahead and bring the applique all the way to the bottom of that, because this bottom portion is going to be sewn into the seam allowance. Now, you could get very specific with a ruler to try to center that just so and say, okay, I want whatever that distance is, this is the distance. Or you can eyeball it, whatever you want to do with that. Once you have that, Let's go ahead and we'll iron that down all the way to the background. And then that's where the bottom trim piece will come in. Now this towel, I measured it before we got started on video and it's about 20 and a half. The bottom fabric, which is included in your kit, which is kind of that trim that we'll be sewing to the bottom of our towel as well as appliquing on, Inside that pattern is having you cut that just a little bit longer, and it's going to feel a little bit weird to you. And I believe the measurement's 9 by 21. I'm going to check that real quick on that page. But it's longer than the towel, and that's intentional. So let's go ahead and go over to that part in our book. Yes, it's 9 by 21, so I have that cut ahead of time. And the step that they're wanting us to do next we would absolutely stitch all that down. Typically, I would go ahead and stitch that down before I even sew the bottom on, but so that we can keep moving. Let's just pretend that that's sewn down with our beautiful 50 weight thread, and we're ready to move on to the next step, which would be cutting our background, or excuse me, our trim to nine by 21. And again, you see how that's a little bit longer, but they show that here in this part of our book. So I'm gonna go ahead uh, and I'm gonna, uh, cut the film here so I can clean up the table just a little bit. I'll bring the sewing machine up and what I'll be doing is placing this right side together knowing that this piece is longer I'm just going to center that so that my fabric, my white, my white dot fabric is kind of centered on that. It's going to be overlapping this side just a touch and that side just a touch and try to even that out because a little bit later on, uh, in a final step, when we're finishing the trim, we're going to need those to be balanced left and right. So let me take care of that. In fact, when I come back, I'm just gonna have that sewn on so that we can go to the next step and keep moving in putting our towel together. So I have my trim piece sewn to the bottom of the towel, and I went ahead and pressed that seam downward. And I'm now laying this right over top of my diagram again, and I've lined up my Santa so that I can see where his shoulders are, his hand, and know that I'm in the right position to go ahead and put the cuff and the other hand on, let me move that again, and the letters. So I'm trying to get my head out of the way. <laughs> it's a little bit blind here, but if I pull that back, and you know what, let's just go ahead and start 
with the letters because I can see that the hand, the mitten, goes over the Y. So very straightforward to put the letters down. I love that I can easily see that uh, location. And of course, once that's down, all of our applique, you'd be doing your final stitching with your pretty 50 weight uh, sulky thread. Let's put that down. And I know once you see how easy these finish, you're going to want to make the other three towels too. And they're adorable. In a bathroom, um, in the kitchen, gift giving is the best. Okay, up here, I can see the mitten. I can't really see where that cuff goes, but I can kind of just put my mitten down and then put that there and I can kind of take a quick peek and I can see, I just need to adjust that ever so slightly. Okay, now once again, we're ready to move that over and iron that down. The trick is, of course, just the movement of trying to not bump anything. There we go. Even if you kind of get a good part of it going and at least stabilize some of it. Once that's done, I know I can move it further over on that side. So let me go ahead and do that so I can get onto the fully on. There we go fully onto the mat. Okay, so as I said, once that part's done, you're really done with your light box, you're done with your diagram, go ahead and grab your beautiful green, you know, black and your white out of your thread set and stitch that down. You know, we've used blanket stitches, straight stitches, you could use a satin stitch if you really wanted to put a lot of thread into there, um, whatever that is and get that part done. We're very close to being completely finished. I'll go ahead and shut that off and move this out of the way. So our next step, I thought this was actually very clever of how she finished this. You'll notice in her uh, book, and I can, I'll open that up again so you can see it. So we're, you're referencing the same thing that I'm referencing. And that's back here on this page, right here. She talks about the fold line. The fold line is just going to be your midpoint. Now before we fold this in half, she has us do one extra step and I wanted to mention to you what that is. And that's to fold, and it's this step right here. Do you notice how she has that folded under? So with this bottom edge, I'm gonna go ahead and let's just move that out of the way. Always space, always space challenges for me on a set like this. Let's move that. Just because these projects are larger, um, I'll move that over there out of the way. I want you to see this step because it, this one confused me a little bit when I, was, when I first was making this. What she wants us to do next is turn that bottom under by a half an inch. And that's why I'll be using my hot ruler. This is a clover notion that's worth its weight in absolute gold because I can't use a regular plastic uh, ruler and make contact with my iron or it'll melt. It'll damage that very important ruler. But this was made to take heat. So I've got a quarter inch, half inch, all the way up to two and a half. So rather than me guessing where that half inch is, I can just lay that down and fold that over and I don't have to worry at all about making direct contact. I can even steam, I can really get in there and make sure I have a nice, even half inch seam allowance all the way across the bottom to slide that down. This is one of those notions that I've had. I've had this hot ruler for years. It's the one time investment and it's, it's one of those things that's kind of mission specific as I call it where it's meant to do a very specific job and that's turning something under by a specific measurement. So it's not a notion you're going to use every day, but when you want that and you need to be doing that, that's what you'll be grabbing for. So very worthy to add that to your sewing room. All right, we tuck that under half an inch. I'll put that aside for the next towel I'll be making and we'll go ahead and turn our towel back to the front 
oh, we always knew I was going to spill some of those <laughs> thread. We knew that was coming, right? No worries. All right, so let's keep going. Now that we have that tucked under by a half an inch, we're just going to bring that up to that line so that this tuck, that fold is even, and we'll go ahead and pin. We are very close to having our towel completed. What's going to happen next is we're just going to, let me bring that over here so I'm not reaching the whole time. We're just gonna sew a quarter inch here on this side and a quarter inch here on this side. Just turn that and that's gonna secure those edges for us and we'll be able to turn that through with our point turner. If, you are, if you're inclined to draw that quarter inch line, go ahead and do that with a friction pen. I'm gonna go ahead and just sew that. Now, if it's kind of wanting to drag off the table there, the weight, I don't have a table next to me, so I'm just gonna kind of gather that up so it doesn't slide away from me. Let's repeat that on this side. Okay, now let's refer back to our instructions. They're uh, mentioning we should clip the corners. So let's go ahead and clip just a touch there. Probably really mostly down in here. It helps just a touch um, to reduce a little bit of that bulk. And we're going to turn that through. Isn't that clever as can be? Just, I would have never thought of that assembly, you know. As, as we work through, of course, lots of projects here at Shabby Fabrics and design lots of things. And I just thought that was a very clever way to finish that. Now go ahead and use your point turner so you can get those corners just as beautifully uh, pointed as you can because you're not gonna be able to do that with your fingers. Again, this is another clover notion. A nice point here, but you know when you're using needing to turn out uh, a circle, maybe like the scallop table topper we just did recently, that's when you'll be using this end. So another tool, just get it. It's, a, it's for a very specific mission, as I said. Um, now inside, after we clip our corners and turn it, they say to go ahead and press that. So we're going to now set that nice crease in the bottom, which I love to do that. And as we saw before, this piece, you know, and I, re I realize now, you know, she had us just turn that under by a half an inch, but I realize now you could have definitely sewn that down. We didn't do that, but as I'm making this again, I can see that sewing this down would have been a great option. It's just one last thing, and it would have a nice finished um, detail on the back but that's not included on the, in the book, so don't feel like you need to do that. But I'm recognizing that could have definitely worked as a way to just kind of have one less flap right here, one less thing you're dealing with. So now, how they're asking us to go ahead and finish that, we wouldn't want to take that to the sewing machine because if we did, we'd be sewing to all the way to the front. So inside the uh, instructions, they say pin the trim piece on the back of the towel just over the seam line because we want to be able to hide that. So we would go ahead, I could even use my flower head pins and just go ahead and pin that down. And then they're saying to use 
hand stitch with a blind stitch along the back of the towel to secure. So we're not going to be going all the way to the front. I just have a needle and thread. This is just the same thread I just sewed that down with. Um, and I historically like to sew right to left. That's just my arrangement. So I'm going to start down here. And with that stitch, if you're unfamiliar with that, the whole idea is exactly what it says. It's a blind stitch. It's supposed to not be seen, but supposed to be having a securing function. So with that in mind, what I'd encourage you to do is you do have a lot of girth back here. Of It's very easy to hide your knot back here. So you're just going to be going quite shallow. I'm trying to do this without keeping with getting my head out of the way. Where I'm just going into the back of that towel and coming up here just like that, right? So it's not going all the way to the front because we want to keep that clean. You never know that this was ever stitched down. And you're just going to work your way down, staying on the back side of that towel, working your way, taking small stitches all the way down. Let me see if I can keep, get that going in the proper direction. Hopefully you can see that. So if, you're, if this is unfamiliar to you, that's the, all you're doing is you're just going to take these small little, I got a little knot in there. There we go. Pull that through and just keep going all the way on the back side only and just catching that edge and you'll continue all the way down, finishing down here. And then again, you can kind of tie off and hide that knot on the back. And then that's what your adorable towel will look like. And again, beautiful to display at home, amazing for a gift, um, and who wouldn't want to receive something this adorable? So be sure to grab these kits. We have limited quantities as always. The Better Not Pout collection has been one of your favorites for Christmas of 2020. We don't know how long these kits will be available. We sure hope you grab those. Again, there's the hanging towels as well as the hot pad. So thanks for hanging in there with me today. We know it's been a longer video, but I want to show you how these go together. And some of the other towels are much simpler. They're not as complicated where you have to wait and do extra applique in a second step. So I wanted to show you the hardest ones so you know how to do that and you'll be able to easily make the others. So thanks again, and I'll see you on a future shabby video.